Thank you very much. I'm uh, very delighted to be here today, um, where I'm no longer the CEO of Bioptogen, but I am uh, the general manager of Bioptogen, uh, as we were acquired by uh, Leica Microsystems a year ago. So we're at a slightly different uh, phase of our development. Um, also, this is a transition of today's program into uh, imaging. So after all the uh, therapeutic uh, histochemistry, uh, I hope this isn't too pedestrian. But what I'm going to talk about is the uh, development of intrasurgical OCT, which we think is going to make a dramatic impact on our patients' lives. So a brief history of Bioptogen. We are a Duke University spin-out formed in 2004. Uh, we were funded uh, by uh, Angel Capital, some strategic investment out of the Brian Holden Vision Institute, and uh, a significant amount of funding from uh, SBIR grants uh, that has successfully led us to exit. We had a couple of, I think, important milestones in our, our company's de development, and on the, the second FDA clearance was for our handheld pediatric uh, ophthalmic imaging system, which is still uh, the only FDA-cleared device for uh, pediatric imaging uh, and handheld imaging. Um, uh, as I said a year ago, like a bodice, uh, because of the, the uh, quality of our images, uh, but not just because of the pediatric imaging, but because this pediatric imaging brought us into the OR. Uh, and in fact, last year, at the end of last year, we received our FDA clearance for the in-focus intrasurgical imaging uh, system. Uh, so why did we do this? Uh, as soon as we introduced the Invisu C2300 for pediatrics, uh, as many children are imaged uh, in the OR under anesthesia, uh, our customer base started to use this for intrasurgical imaging uh, on a, adult and other pa uh, pediatric and adult patients. And notably uh, among this is the, uh, the use by the Cleveland Clinic in their Pioneer trial, where they have uh, already uh, enrolled over uh, 1,000, I think it's approaching 1,300 patients, looking at the efficacy of using intrasurgical OCT during uh, surgeries, mostly retina surgeries. And uh, I'd, I'd say right now the primary conclusion they've, they've drawn is that in over a third of surgeries, uh, the OCT has had an, a direct impact on surgical decision making. Uh, so here are some examples of uh, use in, uh, ma in uh, macular peels and hole repairs. Um, but what we know is that the handheld imaging that Invisu affords is not really what we want in surgery. And so we were motivated to develop uh, the Enfocus platform, which is the uh, surgical, uh, the, the microscope integrated surgical imaging system. So we developed this with the technology that's embedded in the Invisu platform, but with optics uh, targeted at the surgical application, specifically looking to make sure we had a maximum uh, scan range that we had coaxial and telecentric imaging so that we have true reproduction of the uh, surface topology, uh, whatever we're imaging. Uh, this is real-time, uh, true real-time imaging at the B-scan level, and we've introduced uh, independent OCT focus and zoom to optimize the image quality uh, in the surgical field. I think, I'd say today uh, the, the community is still working to understand you know, what, what surgical applications and work, workflow will make OCT uh, the same standard of care that it's been in the clinic uh, in surgery. And to uh, support this, uh, this evolution, we've introduced actually two different systems. The InFocus uh, high definition system built off the uh, Invisu platform has the best resolution in the industry and allows us to see tissue structures at below four micron resolution. But we also introduced the industry's uh, deepest uh, OCT system with a depth in tissue of 11 millimeters uh, to help us look at uh, structural content. <clears throat> because the, the deep imaging system is the newest, I'm gonna show you a couple of movies off of this. And this is a full anterior segment imaging uh, of, with the uh, ultra deep system uh, and because it's in real time, we can actually see dynamics. And if you look at the, uh, the image to your right, uh, looking at IOL placement and its apposition to the capsular bag in real time, I think is, is the critical issue to determining where the lens ends up after surgery. 
uh, and then therefore promoting the adoption of, of uh, premium IOLs. We're not limited to a value proposition in uh, the anterior for the deep imaging system. And here's an example of some imaging done at the National Eye Institute in their uh, RPE stem cell research. Uh, and you can see the uh, flow of stem cells into this uh, bleb. The bleb is about three to four millimeters deep. And really what they want to make sure is that they're not damaging the RPE by poking the RPE with this uh, capillary. Uh, and they want to see that the stem cell uh, scaffold lays flat under the bleb. We can use the uh, Invisu for, for the various retina procedures, but I'll show you a dynamic application. In this case, it's using a, a macular buckle uh, as a, uh, a, a support to a macular hole repair. And here, uh, Dr. Paralini wanted to make sure that that buckle was positioned to provide support directly under the macular hole. And then uh, finally, of course, I think it's well accepted that DSEC will need intraoperative OCT to make sure that uh, donor tissue is appropriately placed. So with that, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, and I just ask you to consider what you might do differently with your uh, surgical field and focus. Thank you very much. Thank you.